Phil, this is a tough question to ask. Uh, and I, I don't know any other way to put it other than to say what happened at Morgan McClure. Well, uh, I thought that was a, I thought it was going to be a great opportunity. We went to Daytona and we're really, really fast and got, got involved in a wreck. Uh, uh, Rob Moroso ran into me and, and he and I and AJ wrecked or whatever. Then we went to, I think Richmond might have been next, and I reckon practice going out to uh, to try to make a mock qual- qualifying run, reckon practice, and uh, and then we end up running the race and then go to Rockingham and get involved in a wreck at Rockingham. I mean, just start out as bad as it could start out, and uh, and Larry McClure decided to make a change. Is there any way to put into words what your reaction was? I mean, that was three races. Mm-hmm. That's that's not a very good test case, in well, my opinion. Well, that, and that's what I thought. And and you know, we talked about winning Talladega and how euphoric that was, and that was you know the highlight of my life to that point or whatever. And you thought it was just the beginning. Well, this this was the low point of my life. This was this was by far, you know, way. Uh, way harder than when I ran out of money and had to go see Humpy to, to try to figure out a, a plan with my life and try to try to stay in racing. This was, uh, this was uh, as, as indescribably uh, happy I was to win Talladega. This was just the opposite, indescrib- indescribably distraught over that. You and I talked very briefly before we started recording, but uh, I did do a story, uh, talk to you and Marsha, uh, for a story and scene uh, before I started working there full time uh, about the rumors that were going on concerning your eyesight. You had had a cataract mm-hmm. surgery on your right? Left eye. Life, left eye mm-hmm. after the 89 season. Mm-hmm. How did those rumors get started? I don't know, honestly. I, I don't know. Uh, there, were, there was talk that you there was something going on with your eyesight. Yeah. Otherwise, and I, I mean, I had cataract surgery, yeah, I, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. But it certainly didn't affect me. I still had 2015 vision, yeah. you know, and I didn't lose any peripheral vision or whatever. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where. I didn't, at the time, I wondered if, 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 if Larry McClure, because uh, he, was, he was well aware, and I told him. I don't know if he was, uh, I, at the time, I said, well, maybe he was trying to use that to justify getting rid of me. And I don't, I don't have confirmation that that ever happened. I don't know that he did. Uh, I always wondered if that was the case. I probably, you know, haven't spoken to him very much since since 1989 uh, or 1990, I should say. But uh, I don't know. Honestly, don't know. And there was no truth to it, other than yeah. it certainly was the fact that I had 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 cataract surgery, which the eye doctor was kind of surprised at, at my age that I had a cataract. But it's typically, obviously, with somebody older so well 30 years later you're not wearing coke bottle glasses I don't, I don't wear contacts wow okay yeah did you and Marsha have a sense that maybe that had damaged your career oh there, there, there was no there was no sense to it without a doubt it did did people actually mention it to you when you would go talk to a team so there was a couple that did yeah. really mm-hmm. what would they say we heard that you had a some you have a vision problem. I said, well, I'll take any any eye test you want to want to take if that's the case. But, but the but the perception was potentially there. Wow. How difficult was it to pick up the pieces after that? What what kept you going? Well, I, I, I met a fella by the name of Gary Bechtel. Okay. Uh, through Felix. Yeah. And uh, Gary was was a neighbor of Felix's and and I think I think maybe Felix made the context that Gary's thinking about running some races would you be interested in talking to him I said absolutely so I went and met with Gary and he decided to uh to run um run a few races toward the end of the year and so that kind of kept in me 90? 1990 okay mm-hmm. ran a few races and uh another situation just like Lou and Jenny Mantle became Tremendous friends. You know, our relation, racing relationship didn't last that long, but uh, but just just his him and his family, such quality people, just loving to death. Actually, went to a went to a dinner with 
with Gary last year at at at, uh, at Richard Childress's Vineyard. So, uh, but that get, that got me going, and uh, and then decided in in '91. You know, Marsha and I did some soul searching. Said, hey, I don't I don't see it happening in the Cup Series. I mean. I mean, I've talked to people, and I would go to the racetrack and feel like a duck out of water, or try to, you know, try to talk to people about ride. Why don't? What do you think about, you know, getting a bush car, you know, going kind of going back to our roots a little bit, and we'll race it when we can afford to race it. And uh, so that's what we decided to do. We bought a car from uh, from Don Beverly, who who had I, I'd actually John, Don Beverly and John Knotson started a team in '89. Uh, and I and we got sponsorship from Skull and Crown Petroleum at the time was my sponsor in the Cup Series. They did, we did like ten or eleven races in 1989. I finished second three times out of those ten or eleven races. I bought one of those cars that from them that I had run, and we got uh, we got ready. We got ready over the winter, but basically by myself, and to, said we'll we'll run whatever races we can run whenever we can afford to run them if we can find sponsors for whatever the case may be. But at that time, there was very there was, you know, I had really nothing going in the Cup Series whatsoever. So, 